Your angels are speaking to you. Do you hear them? Welcome to The Calling of Light with author and empathic spiritual tarot reader Anne Marie O'Dell. The Calling of Light offers direct empathic insight and relatable spiritual topics, interviews with special spiritual guests, and straight talk call in readings. Kick back and enjoy free form spirit tea with Anne Marie, the way you like it best when you want to simplify. Here is your host, Anne Marie O'Dell. My name is Anne Marie, and I am an Home Times radio host. How and what is ethical modern day tarot reading? So, how has modern day psychic reading changed from the old days? Well, it's never been more important to read with integrity. In fact, there are a lot of sites that will not even let you read for them until you have signed or memorized the code of ethical psychic reading. Today, we are going to look at what those rules are. I have been going by those since 2011. And how does the art on your tarot cards affect you? Why is it so important to choose the art on your cards that will click with your intuition? Yes, they may be beautiful cards, but they have to be able, especially if you are going to read professionally or for people you know, they have to be able to click and give you those visions, those messages that will help your reading to be smooth. Because what will happen if that artwork does not click with you, you're going to find yourself stumbling, becoming insecure, and not really having a smooth reading. We'll get to that. What is the difference between affirmation cards and traditional tarot? And can they be used together? Yes, but we'll look at that. We'll look at what exactly is the higher self and the importance of knowing how to step into that zone so that you can read effectively without your ego getting in the way and overanalyzing your reading so that, again, you become choppy, um, you're unsure of yourself, Stepping into your higher self will allow you to be a great reader. The other questions we're going to ask are tarot trivia. How to say goodbye to a worn out tarot deck. Is it safe to adopt someone else's used tarot deck from eBay? Some books encourage Clients are not, they encourage the people that buy a new deck of cards to sleep with them under their pillow. Is that wise? Why or why not? Can tarot be used in a crossing over reading? And if so, as well as someone who reads without tools, can you give a pet reading with tarot? And the question is very simple. If you can give a human reading, you can give a pet reading. The key word is energy. And how is reading with accuracy more important than what divination tools you use for your reading? These are the things that we are going to read on today. Well, in the old days of Tarot, it had a reputation and many saw it as evil because in those days, people didn't ask what political party you were. They asked what religion you were. And now that people are beginning to tune into the fact that spirituality, love and compassion are just as important 
as a religious label. It used to be that if a mother or father found somebody with a tarot deck in their underwear drawer, oh my gosh, that would put them probably to hell and into several meetings of uh, counseling with a minister or a, certainly a great deal of worry and complaining from the family. I have even spoken to people who have been disowned by their family because they were reading tarot or they were giving psychic readings. It seems as if the family forgot the beauty and the true personality of their family member and instead zoned completely into a falsehood about what their conception of tarot was. Back in the old days, questions had no boundaries and covered everything from when am I going to die? When am I going to get married? How many children will I have? And other what I call magic eight ball questions. Our journey as modern day tarot card readers has greatly changed. More and more clients come using readers as life coach therapist. I'm going to tell you a question. I'm going to tell you a story about someone that when I first began reading told me what an old time reader did to her. The woman's husband had died. The reader told her that the money that she received in the insurance for her husband's death was dirty. And to please send the money to that psychic because the psychic was going to clean it for her and put it in a hole in the ground where it would be safe with all kinds of herbs and things on it. And then she would return it as clean money to the woman. Of course, the price for this was not only the cost of sending all of her money that she had for her future when her husband died. It was also, she had to pay like $1,000 to have some kind of psychic clean her money. Of course, it was all bull crap. These are the people that you definitely need to stay away from. Some of them I call old-time psychic readers. Of course, many of them are just old-time ripoffs. But today's modern-day reading is so different. We take pride in spiritual diplomacy. What is spiritual diplomacy? Spiritual diplomacy is the ability to know how to say harsh things you see in a reading in soft ways so that the client can accept them and maybe even utilize them in their own life. For instance, if I see that somebody's husband is cheating on them, or if I see that somebody has reached a pattern in their life of substance abuse, but that has not been said, I would say it in a different way. I would say, Mary, it looks as if you have a pattern of running to a comfort in your life that has actually been self-sabotaging you. I wonder what you think that is. And usually Mary will say she doesn't know, even though Mary may be an alcoholic or she may be a meth addict or whatever current drug is on the scene. She may be just somebody that overeats or she may be somebody that's uh, um, too thin and doesn't eat enough. But when I see the patterns, I try to tell the client in a very soft way, what I see 
and I ask them, do you have any ideas what that may be? Do you, and so in a sense, that is very therapeutic because it allows your client to process what it is they think that, and they know darn well, what it is that their problem is. And then maybe, maybe not, they will tell you about it. As the reading goes on, you can begin to focus on other things like why, you know, a husband that has left her life or a child that is not talking to her anymore. Um, a divorce that is going on and on and on and just seems to be taking forever to decide who gets custody of the children. And, you know, things like that are questions that are asked in modern day tarot reading. Competent therapeutic answers or make someone have hope or make someone feel good. That is going to be the kind of clients they get. There's another thing, though, that readers need to know. Any reader. Always be honest. If there is somebody asking you a question that you cannot answer or is beyond your ability, be honest. Don't try to let on and make up a storybook reading. For instance, <clears throat> Certified readers are not supposed to give medical readings. Why? Because medical readings can lead to clients not going to a doctor and assuming that that psychic can give better information than a physician. No. You don't want someone to die on you. And you don't want to get sued if all of a sudden their medical issue turns worse because you gave them false or unexperienced medical information. There are many alternative readers out there, I understand, that specialize in tuning in medically into people. I, I feel that if you're going to do that, it's still important to go to a therapist. Modern day tarot reading will never lead you to believing that a reading is going to be the only source that you should go to. That would not only be corrupt, it would be certainly just a wonderful way to get sued. Yep. It has never been more important to read with integrity. Do you know the Psychic Reader's Code of Ethics? Because more clients are coming to readers these days for coaching, to talk to someone on a bad day, to listen and get a little bit of hope and give them some direction on their life. It's important that you know how to talk in a way that gives them information, even if it's tough, in a soft way. And I call this spiritual diplomacy. Spiritual diplomacy is just when the cards show you an answer or your intuitive channeling shows you an answer. And you see it's not good. This is the difference between the old days of reading and the modern day tarot reading. Old way of tarot reading would have said, honey, dump the guy. He's on drugs. He's no good. We want to be able to make sure that this person loves someone very much and that 
they have it explained to them, you know, I can see that you really, really care about someone. But here are the reasons why I feel that maybe you need to think about the way, and you need to let me know, of course, about the way I'm seeing that you're being treated. For instance, I'm seeing that you're being treated without gratitude. I feel a sense of disrespect. I feel mixed messages that you're getting a lot of excuses and that that's hard on you. I'm seeing that you're trying so very hard not to vent when you are being verbally abused. And then it's creating a lot of anxiety and sleeplessness in your life. I wonder if you could let me know if that sounds accurate to you. Your client will probably be grateful that you let part of their misery um, out in the open. And they will probably, in most cases, say, yes, that's true. And then, like an orange, each reading peels away a layer of their life situation so that slowly you can begin to resolve the situation, give some strategy, and then whether they have the desire or the money to go on longer for a reading, it gives them a reason to come back if you've been kind and soft with them, they will feel that you were respectful. So just remember, use spiritual diplomacy. So what are the code of ethical psychic reading? Again, I feel that every psychic needs to know these things. Yes, there are readers that have specialties that would be financial or medical. And if that is something that they have rave reviews about, then okay. But if you are a reader that truly wants to keep yourself from getting sued and finding a way to be able to have the best rapport with your clients possible, here is the code of ethics. We are fully present with our clients, giving our attention and integrity. We will not judge our clients' choices, lifestyle, or circumstances. We offer no personal opinion, or perspective. We respect our clients' privacy and honor their trust. We will objectively provide spiritual direction and clarity. Now, in a nutshell, that's what, what it's all about. But I would like to go through some of these one by one. We believe in and trust the light, our inspiration and guidance source, regardless of our religious beliefs, being a steward of hope and giving direction for the better good is our calling. As light workers, we are not here to be old time gypsy spell makers or create fear 
so that people will come back and pay thousands of dollars so that they can uh, lead you into believing they are the way. No. I believe that following the light is following kindness, integrity, and a way to speak softly. We reveal the truth as it is revealed to us. Important. Why? If we go into a reading with our own personal opinions, then when we give a reading, we're not really, we're not really channeling or being intuitive to that particular person. We are just going by um, prejudices or judgments that we have about the world. So it's so important that you stay focused on what is in front of you when you read tarot cards. Each card gives you a perspective. It gives you an, a way to look at the question that is being asked of you. So being able to read that without judgment is very important because everyone wants to be appreciated. Everyone wants to be honored. And even if you don't like that person, and even if they're asking questions like, uh, just cheated on my wife and uh, wondering if the new girlfriend's going to screw me. Um, you know, you can choose not to answer that question and that would be totally all right. Or you can try in an understanding way to understand that this person is asking you because maybe they want actually more than a yes or no. So revealing the truth as it is revealed to you is keeping your personal perspective, keeping your personal opinion out of it, and making sure that that person feels honored. We are fully present with our client, giving our attention, discretion, and integrity. Well, this is a really tough one. If you're a mom and you're a full-time reader and you've got children crying in the background, right? Or you're in the midst of a fight with your husband and you're reading and you're hollering at each other back and forth between a reading. No, 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 no. You have to remember to be fully present. Choose times where you know that your life is calm and you feel at peace. We will not judge our clients' choices, lifestyle, or circumstances. We offer no personal opinion or perspective. I will be honest with you. I have had clients say, was that your personal opinion or were you reading? <laughs> And there are times that we readers are just as messed up as everybody else. And I appreciate when they say that. So I challenge this one. At times, as I said before, you will give a reading to someone you really, really disrespect or don't like. It's so important not to treat them like crap. It's so important to treat them as if you are their best friend or their mother or whatever your niche is. Because even if someone is embezzling from a company, and I have had situations like that where there has been someone that embezzled or someone that... Um, is living a very contradictory lifestyle that I would not want my neighbor to be. 
But you have to learn to shut that off, shut your prejudice off, and speak without judging. You're here to heal. You're here to give direction. Leave the rest alone. We respect our clients' privacy and honor their trust. Oh my gosh, this is such a big one. I have known readers who cold sell, just like telemarketers. They have a client, and then they start to call that client and say, whoa, I just had a flash about you, and it wasn't good. You better come here for a reading, and let's get this figured out. Honey, you just had a cold sell. Respect your client's privacy. It is also a very good idea, and I do this personally, to not ask for private information. It is my belief that if you have to ask for private information, then probably you're not that good of a reader because um, part of being a good reader is learning how to intuitively focus on the energy you feel from your client. We will objectively provide spiritual direction. Ohm Times TV. Hi, my name is Anne Marie O'Dell, and thank you for inviting me in for tarot and coffee. I offer 37 plus years of accurate, honest tarot channeling. Spirit comes through me as a feeling an inner knowing I call the angel frequency. As you say your first name, I close my eyes and shuffle my well-worn card as I go into a deep calm by phone, Skype, or Zoom. Contact me at thecallingoflight.com. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself. Invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Own times. Open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse, walk a mile in my shoes. Hi, I'm Anne Marie, and you are listening to Ohm Times Radio, and we are going to go into tarot trivia facts. Some of the things that people learn from books with new decks. Things that should probably be questioned. And as an experienced reader for over 37 years, one of those is, should you sleep with your tarot cards under your pillow? My answer to that is, of course, you always have free will. But there's another side to this. Tarot readers usually get to the point where there is an actual psychological closing of the intuition when they put it in a box. They put their cards in a box after they have read for them. 
and then close the lid and put them away. This is because, in my opinion, if I am in a sleeping state of mind, I am completely open to all messages coming to me. Tarot, to me, chatters when it is not put away. If I sleep in a room where the tarot cards have not been put in their box, it's as if they're like friends that won't shut up. They just chatter and chatter and chatter. And half the time, I don't even know where these thoughts and subliminal type messages are coming from. And it's as if I'm giving a reading all night long. For this reason, I say it is so important to put your cards away so that you can have rest. Your intuition needs to rest. We don't walk around like sieves processing all day and night. It's exhausting. We have to learn how to just be normal people that are not reading all the time. Reading is different than analyzing, of course. Analyzing is when you are processing everything around you that you do, the choices you make. Analyzing is an addiction that people need to learn how to shut off. It is as addictive as cigarettes or alcohol or meth. Uh, analyzing is when you can't turn your brain off. So when you are sleeping, you want to be able to turn your analytical mind off. And it sure doesn't help if your little tarot cards are next to your head going, they're not a real voice, okay? It's just this constant flow of looking at things. And so you may experience as you are reading cards that the reading is not even one you asked for. So sleeping with tarot is fine for some, but I would encourage you not to sleep with your cards beneath your pillow. You can develop a wonderful rapport with your cards by daily reading while you are memorizing the card meanings or while you are learning to channel the cards, but sleeping with them underneath your pillow to me is asking to me for trouble because it's like as you get more and more in tune with spirit, you will also have to put up with the negative voices as well as the positive voices. Just like Jesus walking the desert in the 40 days and nights, he had to learn to choose which side of spirit and God he was on. The devil, which I'm not saying is relevant to spirituality, but negativity is always tempting you at the same time that pure and, and thoughts for the better good are. So while you're sleeping, you are open to that, what I call 40 days and nights of the wilderness, the same one that great masters have gone through. And in that, you will decide as you read which side, which attitude, which way you're going to read the cards. There are people that are very negative. And the more that they tune into negativity, they will only see the negative. But if you choose for the better good, then that 40 days and nights of your wilderness as you sleep, as you are in that spiritual openness, you will choose the better good. But why tempt it to happen with sleeping with your cards beneath your head or your pillow. 
What exactly is the higher self? It is that part of yourself, that sacred space within you that is connected to the wise, eternal, and loving space we call spirit, God, our angels, Reiki. But choosing to be with your higher self when you read is extremely important because your higher self is like your soul self. It is that part of you that is the essence of who you are and what will go on when you die. It is that part of you of beauty, of love, of peace. And it is a different kind of state of mind. So when you step into your higher self, you don't say, all right, higher self, come on in. No, you don't do that. You allow your thoughts to go quiet. When you read, you allow your thoughts to stop and just become peaceful. This is when your higher self takes over and your readings become smooth. Is that it is the place of your raw you, your true you, and it is not the side of the DNA. It is not the side of your parental um, chromosomes. It is not the side where uh, your choices were made from your lifestyle and your childhood. That is not what your higher self is. You may find when you read in the arms of your higher self, that a peaceful flow surrounds you. It is a part of us connected to a higher consciousness, a universal intelligence. So when you read for others, it's important to learn to quiet your analytical mind, to quiet all of those nagging little thoughts about your day so that you can read smoothly and with integrity. Your logic and your intuition and your higher self connect with each other. You eliminate your thoughts and it's almost as if all of a sudden it flows out of you, out of your mouth, and your reading begins. It's the ability to surrender, learning to trust that the information that flows through when your higher self steps in is the mark and the beginning of your true journey as a psychic, medium, tarot reader. You just have to surrender and trust it. Again, I'm not talking about Sunday school here, guys. I'm not talking about all of the lessons you learn to be polite I'm not talking about your DNA. I'm not talking about your childhood scars. I'm talking about letting all that go. Letting your thoughts go so that your higher self can step in as you begin to get into reading for others. Um, many people collect tarot cards. I don't. To me, tarot cards are friends. Um, I only have a few close friends. 
because I know and trust that when I have fewer close friends, I can depend on them. They are more supportive. And I know that it's not going to become a popularity game. I am not going to try to be a collector of tarot cards, which is absolutely all right to do. But for me, tarot is all about aligning myself, my higher self, through the pictures, through the artwork that I choose in my tarot cards. Well, what happens one day after 50 zillion tarot readings, when your cards begin to get faded, torn, or they just start to disintegrate in your hands? You have to find a way to let go of a very precious tool that has served you well. Your friend is, it's like, I'm not saying that paper is a friend, but it, it is a honorable thing to let go of your tarot cards, not by pitching them in the garbage. But I have found that you get a point, you get to a point where you don't want to eliminate the cards that you've read with because they've absorbed so much energy. And sometimes you just stuff them in plastic bags in the back of a desk or something like that until the day that you discover what to do with them. <clears throat> One of the ways that I suggest is cremation, which is starting a fire pit or in a camp trip that you have um, sit down, take your cards that you are letting go of, and one by one, letting them go into the fire, just as in a sacred and honorable way. Another way is to use them on a piece of furniture that you get at a secondhand shop. You might want to get an old dresser, a little desk, um, a potting stand. Make sure it's wood. Then take the cards that you're trying to get rid of and pick the ones with the most positive message and place them in the design that you want them on that piece of furniture. After you have created that design, you're going to put some glue on the back of them and make sure that they're nice and secure onto your furniture piece. And then you're going to take decoupage and you're going to put it on the surface of the top of the table, whatever it is that you're decoupaging with your old tarot cards. You can always take the cards you don't use and let them go into a cremation fire. Or maybe you just want to find a beautiful box for them. Depending on how much you read, you're going to find that those decks begin to pile up which is also another good reason why you should always get a quality deck that has beautiful, firm paper, a wonderful smell, and of course, that artwork that clicks to you and puts you into your higher self so you can read smoothly. Should you buy a tarot deck that has been sold on eBay, it's up to you, of course. There's many beautiful decks on eBay, some belonging to people who don't want to, you know, get rid of their cards and they love them, but they want to sell them and, and give them to someone else who would use. Um, maybe a little conversation with them on eBay or for sure you want to clear the cards with white sage when you get them from eBay, any used deck should be cleared with sage. 
And this should be almost a three-day process. Clean, clean the cards with sage, put them in a box, maybe sprinkle some sage and on the cards. The next day, repeat the process, clear the cards with, with smoke from sage, white sage, put them back in the box, sprinkle a little fresh sage on them. And the third day, do it again. I think that is probably the best way that you're going to be able to clean the cards. When you feel that sense that you have cleaned them, you'll know, you'll know. They feel neutral. They feel like they're not, they're not buzzing with someone else's energy. They're neutral. And then you can begin to make them your friend or to make them be your tool for divination. Can tarot be used for crossing over readings? Absolutely. Please understand that the TV psychics and the mediums that are getting somewhat celebrity focus, they are not better than everybody else. Just like there's wonderful actors there's, and that have not been discovered yet. If you are somebody that has fine-tuned your tarot reading skills to where energy comes easily to you and you read it smoothly, you are now ready to do a crossing over reading. What I do is I ask the person that wants a message from someone crossed over to say their name. And I'll say, I may tell them to do that three times. I usually know when I can feel that connection, I will actually feel a warmth around me. I would feel a smile sometimes or a worry, but it's like a personality steps in. At that point, I begin to give a spirit message reading. Just like if you watch um, Rhode Island Psychic or other famous psychics, the message that they give is without tools, but it's still a message, right? Some of the things that they talk about are the way they felt about the people in their life. Um, some are very in tune with naming precious jewelry and things. I am not. That's not my forte. To me, I don't care about special jewelry or, you know, the material things. I give the message I feel coming through. Is George or Jenny or, or mom or dad standing next to me? That depends on how you look at it. I would say even um, the best of psychics say, no, they're not standing there. They're not, you're not looking at them giving readings. You feel the essence coming in. You feel the messages. And that's the same way with a tarot crossing over reading. You put one card down. I usually use um, traditional Celtic layout. The first card will be the hello card. And I'll say what that hello card is, what the message is. The next card will be the thought they may have about the person that's asking for a message. And then I just go with the cards and I can feel so strongly some messages. Now, there are some messages that I don't feel step in. And it's very difficult to read for that. And I will be honest with someone. I'll say, I'm not feeling it. Or I don't feel like they're, they're wanting to do this. But very seldom have I ever had to do that. In most cases, I have seen 
expressions of relief, expressions of tears, things that I say that come out that hit them. Yes, that's true. I don't necessarily look for, um, how do I want to say, when I give a message reading, I just, I, I just stay with a message that comes through in the cards. But I will say, sometimes I can feel them smiling when they say this, or an expression that you feel in their attitude changes. And I'll say, I feel right now that they're worried. Um, something, those are the things that are showing that you're connecting. How about pet communication with tarot? Obviously, there are people that communicate without tools. I've had people that have asked me, I just had a separation with my boyfriend. We shared a dog together. Could you please tell me, is he okay? Is what are, what, what's on his mind? What's going on? Is he adjusting? So then when I do a reading, it's no different than reading for a person because our animals, our energy, our anim animals have thoughts. And so I may say, I see that he is worried. I see that he's anxious. Or maybe I see that he's doing perfectly fine. But then I will go into all the little thoughts that I see through the cards. So yes, pet communication is perfectly doable with Tara. What is the difference between a psychic line and personal readings? And can they be worked together? Well, it depends on what kind of income you want to make. If you have a shop in a prosperous city and you have clients, it may very well be that you can make the living on that alone. But most readers have a personal business and if they need to pay the rent and pay bills, they also work for a psychic line. Your personal business is always is the one that you love the most. Real upfront person-to-person -person people. And I'll go into that in a minute. The other one is a psychic line, which offers readings by phone, readings by text, chat, a psychic line will pay you weekly, depending on how many hours you put in. That's supplemental money. Some will pay you daily and put that money that you do in hours right into your checking account or PayPal daily. Others, or maybe the same line, will also send a paper check. Or, um, you know, basically you're the boss. You decide. Everybody falls in love at some point in their life. And everybody has a goal, but it may not always happen when you want it to. Why? Because I think your higher self or your angel or your spirit guide is saying, now, wait a minute. You're not quite in balance yet. Let's, let's have a little more neutrality, a little more calm, then you're ready. But this euphoria that people go into can sometimes create total self-sabotage when it creates a sense of giving more than you get back in return, only to find that you put it all into a direction that really wasn't good for you and your higher self made sure it didn't happen, but it's taking care of you.